Hi guys, what's up? LJS here, back finally with another deck profile. And today uh, we have a special clan. Uh, one of the, I think, I believe is one of those really underrated clans. So today's deck profile will be on Great Nature, a really underrated um, clan and underused clan, I believe. But it's actually a very good clan. Yeah, and um, so this deck will be on Leopard Reverse. Which is from set 13, I know, I know it's at 13 and now it's at 14 And it's a bit late, but I think that this deck is, um, you know, deserves some love So I decided to do a deck profile on it So for those who don't know, Great Nature's um, specialty is in what I call doping Or taking drugs Because essentially, they focus on giving rear guards 4k Okay, po giving them power of 4k Not 5k, 5k will be OP because it's a medic number But they give rear guards 4k and at the end of the turn, they die due to drug overdose. So, with set 13, um, they finally got a new boss, Leopard Reverse, which is a really good card. And they finally got their Break Ride, which really, you know, helps the deck. And, you know, we're now with Break Ride um, being the meta thing. Every clan should have a Break Ride, you know, to compete. But anyways, um, Great Nature is one of those um, clans which require some smart plays. Combo and you know, yeah, you, you require smart place to get the the number right because you have four K. So you really need to know how to think and calculate on your feet to make sure that giving four K is worth it to break the next tier to force your opponent to you know guard an extra card or whatnot to make it worth it because you know at the turn of, at the end of the turn they die. So yeah. So anyways, for this deck you have your boss Leopard Reverse supported by the break right. And then you have what you call the dopers, or the one that gives power, or druggies um, Which is your Binoculus Tiger And Tank Mouse And finally you have cards that help you um, Help balances out the losses you made from your regrets dying Which is the Hamsuke series And Coiling Duck Bill So, now let's go to the deck profile with the general premise out of the way So first, for the boss I run 3 Leopard Reverse Actually no, this is my friend's deck So my friend runs 3 Leopard Reverse So for those of you who don't know the skill It's... His skill is... Sorry Lock one of your Great Nature Rear Guards And then choose up to 2 of your Great Nature Rear Guards At the end of the turn, they get 4k And the skill of at the end of the turn Sorry, until end of the turn they get 4k At the end of the turn, retire this unit And during your end phase, when this unit is put in a drop zone Call it to open R So essentially, it's the part reverse helps you negate your losses So whenever, you know, you essentially what you do is you lock a rear guard You lock a rear guard Give two front row units 4k At the end of the turn, they die And they come back so, which means that, you know, you don't lose your rear guards and it comes back alive. So this is really good because what you do is usually you will lock your whole back row and you actually essentially give both your front row rear guards 12k, which is pretty good. With a 9k, with a 9k rear guard, you hit 21k, which is a magic number. So anyways, next boss you have, or the next skill is, is that it's, it's a cross right of Leopold. So if you have Leopold in the soul, he gets 2k, which is, we make him 13k forever. So next, we run, he runs, four Cat Noirs, the Break Ride. So his skill is, okay, this um, Break Ride skill is a bit complicated, and it, so you really, you really need to understand Vanguard rules to actually know how the combos for this deck work. So his skill is that whenever a Green Nature rides this unit, your Vanguard gets 10k, and the skill of, whenever your Green Nature rear guard attacks a Vanguard, Choose one of your Great Nature Rear Guards and until the end of the turn, it gets 4k and at the end of the turn, draw a card and then retire that unit. So let's break this down. Essentially, essentially what it does is that whenever your front... Okay, when you break right, whenever your front row attacks, you can give someone... Okay, he, he did not specify, it just says one of your Great Nature Rear Guards. Okay, 4k. So you can, you can actually give it to anyone, including himself. So what you do is, when he attacks, you can give someone 4k, 
including himself. And at the end of the turn, the person you give 4k to dies. So let's say you give 4k to someone behind, he dies. Let's say you give 4k to himself, he dies. And then you draw a card. So the important thing is that the key word is that whenever a regret attacks, so every time it attacks a vanguard, you can draw a card. So this is really a key point because it really uh, affects what kind of triggers you run, which in this deck are run stand triggers. Because every time a regret attacks, you can draw a card. So Cat Noir is a very important um, card in this deck because it allows you to really draw cards and recuperate from dying units. So for Great Twos, I run, or my friend runs, the important thing of 4 Binoculus Tiger. So this is a very key card in this deck, and its skill is whenever this unit attacks a vanguard, choose another of your Great Nature Regards, and you may have that unit get 4k until end of the turn. If you do, that guy dies at the beginning of the end phase. So essentially, um, if you notice, Cat Noah's skill is that he gives every regard binocular skill, except that you can give 4k to anyone including himself. Binoculars, on the other hand, can only give 4k to another regard. And this is the thing, it says you may, so you can choose. You may give it 4k. So whenever he attacks a vanguard, you can give someone else 4k, and that guy dies at another 10. So yeah. And oh yeah, this the iron ironic thing is that he's the only triple R in the deck, because this is set 7, and he was a triple R. It's very hard to find. Set 7, triple R. Not easy to find. And the bosses are double R's. <laughs> Lols. Anyways, next, you run 4, Pencil Knight, Hamsuke. Um, so this guy, his skill is, during your end phase, when this unit is put into the drop zone from R, if you have a great nature vanguard, you may pay the cost of Kana Blast 1. If you do, search your deck for another card named Pencil Knight Hamsuke. Reveal to your opponent and put in your hand. Essentially, so essentially this guy helps you recuperate from losses of people dying. So if he dies, you can Kana Blast 1, put another of him from a deck into your hand. So essentially you get a free 5k in your hand. So it's sort of a draw. You can draw 5k in your hand and, well, it makes up for his death. But he's, he's only 8k, so it's a bit of a problem. But it's okay because if you give 4k to him, he becomes a 12k. So next, grade 2, you run... Uh, oh. Ah, right here. You run 2 Compass Lion. A Compass Lion is one of those 11k grade 2s. And, he's, and it's, a, it's a double edged sword. So, first of all, at the beginning of... Okay, so every turn, okay, at the beginning of the end phase, choose one of your regards and retire it. So this is one of those guys that you know um, he doesn't give power, but every time at the end of every at the end of every turn you must kill something, you must choose something to die. So he is a double edged sword in that he's a very good 11k base and 11 attacker, but something must die every turn. But of course he is useful because let's say sometimes when you play you don't have any any of your dopers to give 4k, so and you want something to die. For example, you want Hamsuke to die to to you know pull him out to thin your deck. Use him to choose him to die, so that you can get another of him from your deck into your hand, and you essentially deck thin. For those of you who don't know, deck thinning means you know making your deck thinner. And in Vanguard's case, you want to keep it, you want to thin it to give more and more, uh, to leave more and more triggers in your deck, so your trigger checking chance is higher. Yeah. So next, we run two um, Geograph Giant, your Vanillas. So that's your great two lineup. Oh yeah, uh, Leopard Reverse, I run 3. If you want to run 4, it's fine. I mean, he's your main boss in the deck, so running 4 is probably a good idea, but I find that 3 is enough. So if you want to have 4, you can actually just swap out one of the great 2s, you know, maybe a Panda or a Compass Lion. Or if you don't like Compass Lion, you can just swap him out completely for Pandas for, you know, 8, 10k, because a lot of boosters are 6k. But it doesn't really matter because most of your boosters will be locked by him anyways, so you don't actually really use your boosters to boost. Anyways, um, for great ones, I run for perfect guards, cable sheep. Also, a really hard card to find because it's from set seven, and it's the only perfect guard for good nature. Sadly, they didn't repaint any. And I run for I run for perfect perfect guards because you know, I mean, it's pretty explanatory. You run four sentinels in your deck for guarding power purposes. Next, 
we run another key card. Oops, sorry. A really key card in this deck, which is Tank Mouse. So Tank Mouse skill is that rest him and give another guy 4k. And at the end of the turn, the person you give 4k to dies. So you may think, wow, why would I do, why would I do that? Why would I rest this guy? He's a 6k boost and give someone 4k. Well, the thing is, which is which is less than 6. The thing is, it he works really, really well with Leopard Reverse. Because Leopard Reverse requires you to lock a rear guard. So what you do is you rest him, give 4k to someone in front, and then use Leopard skill to lock. So at least your lock card is not wasted. And essentially when you lock it, he gives 4k to two front row uh, rear guards. So essentially you give 8 and 4, which is essentially you're turning a 6k booster to a 12k power upper. Which is pretty good. So yeah, um, tank mouse, pretty good. Also, for, also, let's say for example, let's say you have no attackers, and you have full column, and you have your vanguard column, but you have this guy here, you can still rest him to give power to your other column. So it's still useful, in a sense. So next, we run three of the Great One Hamsuke, Pencil Squire Hamsuke, which has the exact same skill as your Great Two Pencil Knight Hamsuke. So his purpose is to thin the deck out as well. So yeah, very useful. Very useful for um, deck thinning, same thing as with Hamsuke, and also to you know recuperate your losses from things dying and adding 5k to your 5k shield to your hand for next turn. Next for grid one I run three Quelling Gut Bills. He's another card that helps you, you know, uh, make up for your regards dying. So his skill is that whenever he gets called on okay on only on doing your main phase, when he's called to rear guard, choose another of a great nature rear guards and that unit gets during your end phase when this unit put is put into the drop zone from rear guard cycle Draw a card until another turn. So essentially, when you call him, you give someone else that skill, and if he dies, draw a card. Yeah, and the thing is, he says you choose another regard, so you can't choose himself, which is kind of sad, you know. Sometimes I would prefer to give him him the skill and then kill him instead because he's on. He's a one use card. Just call on. Yeah, he's a one use card. On call, give someone the skill of when he dies, draw a card. So yeah. So that's great ones. For so for triggers, I run. Well, at least my friend runs. Uh, seven stand triggers. Well, the thing is, um, ideally we run we will run eight stand triggers. But the thing is, um, we couldn't find any extra. I don't have any extra eraser alpaca stand triggers. So seven stand triggers. I'll explain to you later why stand triggers is really good because this deck can hit for numbers and if you can restand your regard and hit for big numbers it really drains your opponent's hand. Yeah. And also it combos really well with the break right skill, which you know if you remember earlier I said whenever a regard attacks you can draw a card. So stand triggers essentially stands one of your regards, allow them to attack again and you get to draw another card. Next we run five crit triggers. Four offense, you know. Uh, ideally, it would be just four. You know, this will be this guy will be the stand trigger. Then we run four heals. And for a starter, we run this guy, the telescope rabbit, a disco rabbit. So his her his skill is the same as similar to tank mouse, except that you need a cost of counter plus one. So counter plus one, rest this unit, and you choose another rear guard to give and give it four k. And if you do, that guy dies. So this guy is useful because it combos well with Leopard Reverse skill. So whenever you and it's also useful for early game for giving someone power, doping them. So what you do is that you kind of blast and rest and then lock him. Also, if you want, you can also play the Grade Three Searcher. Kind of blast one point. So look for top five for a Grade Three because um, this deck um, having the break right first, having the break right really is really helpful. So. You will probably want to have a great tree searcher to search for a break right. But personally, I prefer this guy because, you know, sometimes you may not have your tank mile, sometimes you may not have your binoculars tiger. So you, you need this guy to give power of 4k so that someone dies and you can, you know, make use of the Hamsuke's deck thinning skills and etc. 
So now with that deck profile out of the way, let's talk about some of the combos you can do with this deck because this deck is pretty combo reliant. And yeah, so let's get to the combos which I will show later. So as I said, Great Nature is a very tacky deck and it requires quite a lot of combos. And this deck in particular requires a lot of smart plays and combos to actually make it really good and beneficial. So two things that this deck does really well is in is number one, it hits with power. Lots and lots of power. And it has stance, which can be very annoying because it will be wrecking you with lots and lots of power. Number two, it allows you to draw quite a lot of cards. So let's look at these two cases in the ideal situations. I'll show you the ideal case of how powerful or how much draw you can get. And of course, you know, ideal situations won't happen in real life. But you can base your place on these ideal situations. So first, let's, talk, let's look at the power side. Um, okay, so let's say we have this. We have this. We have this. And we have a back row full of tank mouses. So this turn, let's say you break right. And the break right skill is, you know, as you know, whenever a front row attacks, you give something else 4k, including himself. And that guy dies, and you draw a card. Okay? Low part reverse skill is lock something and give two units 4k, and they both die, and they both can be revived back after they die. Tank mouse skill is rest and give 4k to someone, and that guy dies. Barnacle's Tiger is when he attacks Vanguard, give someone else 4k. His skill is whenever at the end of the turn, someone dies. So, break right. This guy is now 21k. Rest, you give 4k here. Rest, you give 4k here. Rest, you give 4k, let's say here again. Lock up skill. Lock, lock, lock. So now you actually give him 4k 4 times. You gave him 4k 5 times. So now he is uh, 4k 4 times, it's 16. So he's 27 now. 4k 5 times is now 29. Hmm. Or would it be better to give 5 here? So if you give 5 here, it's 31, which is a nice number. If you give 4 here, it's uh, 25, which is a decent number. So, let's say you attack this guy first. Boom. You use break right skill, give 4k himself. You see skill, give 4k here. So now he has 4k, 1, 2, 3, 4, let's say 5, 5 times. So he's now at 29k to Vanguard. Next, you attack with Combat Lion. So a little part, uh, break right skill as well, give himself 4k. So now you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 4 k which is uh, 28, which is now 39. 39k, and this is 30 something k, which you can't remember. So, as you can see, it's powerful. So, let's say when you attack Vanguard, 21k. First check, stand. Stand this guy. Second check, ooh, look, another stand. Stand this guy as well. So, now you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Attack, use the back skill, give himself 6. 6 4k. 6 4k is now 24. 24 plus 9 is 33. 33 hits cross rights. Use Leopard skill again, give 4k here as well. Also, you have another 5k from his trigger, so it's 38k column, uh, rear guard. Now, give power to him. Now, he attacks. You use back right skill, give himself. So now you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 4k, which is uh, 9 times 4. 36, 36 plus 11 is uh, 47k, 47k, which, yeah. So as you can see, columns attack for 30 and above. And if you get a stand, oh sorry, 37 plus another 5k is 40, so 47 plus another 5k is 52. So this guy is attacking for 52 right now after stands. So, of course, uh, my maths may have been wrong here because I'm counting on the fly. But as you can see, you can give 4k a lot of times. And with Catnaw skill, they both die. Leopard skill brings them back. And with Catnaw skill, you draw a card. You draw a card for every attack. So this turn itself, if you have two stand triggers. You draw. You actually draw four cards. So you draw one, one, two, three, four in your hand. So yeah, and then you unlock. So as you can see, on break right turn, with a Binoculars Tiger, you can give four K. One, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 times if you have no stand triggers. 12, 
12, do 12 dopings gives you a total of 48k power to distribute among your front row if you have no stance. So, um, one from wrestling him, so you have three. Then, Leopard skill, lock, get each of you, each give two. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's nine from rear guard. Nine for case from rear guard. Then, break right skill itself, when it attacks, you give another two. Well, it gives 4k twice. So, that's 11. But no first skill gives another one. So, as you see, 12 4k's, which is very good. If you get stance, you get to give another two more for manifest skill and back right skill. So you have 14. So let's say you let's say roughly you get one stand and this is your ideal setup. You can give 4k uh, 14 times, which equals to uh, 56k of power distributed to your front row. And if you play stands, you can actually attack again. And as you can see, stands combo very well with the break right. Because what it does is that essentially it converts a stand trigger into a stand and draw trigger because you get the draw from his skill. So running stands in his deck is better than running draws because you have enough draw power from him as well as your Hamsu case which helps you to find another of himself from the deck as well as Dark Bill which helps you to draw cards. So you don't actually need to run draw triggers. And the thing is, this is much better because it's a 10k shield Stand trigger, you can stand, use the stand effect to stand in the guy and push for high power again. Yeah, so in this turn, break right turn itself, you can actually push for a lot of power. Even if you don't break right, Leopard skill itself gives a lot of power. You have, if you have three tank mouse, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9. Final Tiger, 10. So you have 10 doping chances, which is 40k. 40k of power to your front row rear guards. And your part skill brings them back. So essentially, you're giving 4k at zero cost. Zero cost. So let's look at the second case of highest drawing power. Uh, drawing power. Let's see. So your field setup, I did the best case would be Hamsuke. And let's assume two more Hamsukes in a deck, which is not likely, but this is the ideal case. So you have two more Hamsuke in your deck. Then you break right. Push. Then you call Dark Bill, give the skill here. Dark Bill, give the skill here. Dark Bill, give the skill here. Next, you lock, lock, lock. 4k, 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 4k. Now you attack. Break right skill, give power. Attack. Break right skill, give power again. And let's just say ideally you get two sand figures again. Stand. Attack. Give okay, power, power, power again. So uh, I'm too lazy to calculate the power, but essentially you probably give 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 7, 4 case. So that's 20, 28 for each side, I think. Yeah, anyways, which is quite powerful. So at the end of turn, you unlock, they die, their skill activates, come plus 2, okay, they die, Le pass skill, come back out. Um, bear right skill, you draw 4 cards because, you let's assume you get 2 stands, you draw 4 cards because you attack 4 times. Then Hamsuke skill, counter blast 2, search your deck for another 2 Hamsuke, put in your hand. Then that build skill, you draw 1 for every time, it, one, for each one that dies, which is 3. So in the end, you drew, let me think first, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9. You draw 9 cards in this turn. Assuming you get two sand triggers. So two cards from Homsuke's skill, like with Kanras 2. Three cards from Dark Bill's skill because they both die. And then another four from Break Right skill because let's assume you get sand triggers, so it attacks. So each attack you have one, two, three, four attacks, you draw four cards. So in that turn you get nine cards. You draw nine cards in this turn. Of course this is the ideal case. So as you can see, this deck is actually really good. Because you can actually draw a lot of cards. Yeah. Although, yeah, so as you can see, Great Asia is a really good skill. It's a really good deck. And you can actually push for lots of numbers. Lots of, numbers. Um, of course, ideally, we would rather, I would rather actually run 12 stands instead of crits because stands are very good in this deck because you want to make use of that 4k you give. Because every time you give someone 4k, it dies. So you want to actually um, make use of that as much as possible. 
So for example, you get 4K here, now it's 12K thicker. And you want to actually make use of that 4K twice, so you have a sand trigger. Yeah, so even though you don't have crit, but this deck isn't really about critting your opponent, this deck is about pushing your opponent with numbers and draining their hands while you draw lots and lots of cards. So in the end, you'll be whacking them, their hand size will be small, their hand size will be big. So yeah, this is a very good deck because and as I've seen my friend playing, oh my friend is actually new to Vanguard and this is his first, his first deck and he's been playing this deck and he's been beating meta card, meta decks like CBD, Bridging Form, uh, Tether Drive and so on and so forth. So as you can see, this deck is really good, underrated and I believe it's one of those card decks that really takes skill to play. Um, I don't mean to be uh, critical but the final lot of meta decks right now are actually require no skill to play. It's very easy to play. Whereas deck like this requires a lot of skill to play and it's a very very good deck. So yeah, so that's my deck profile for Leopard Reverse. If you like it, thumbs up, uh, comment, anything you want to ask or anything you want to correct me about or anything you want to add on, comment down below and subscribe for more stuff. Yeah, so this has been the LJS. Thanks for watching.